What's up crew? Welcome to Monday is essentially what my entire morning has been and it is now two o'clock so whole morning plus noon. It's been working 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 and this is what I'm talking about as far as trying to figure out my schedule because I'm trying to do a lot and a lot of it's for free but it's also uh, so that I can understand what it is that I'm capable of doing as a media company uh, and what I mean by that is you know as big man media I offer video production start to finish everything included and i'm trying to see if with that i can also offer social media support i think i can so like right now uh my main accounts that i i control my account obviously personal big man syndrome big man media crossfit extreme athletics i have access to i'm not a hundred percent owner but i do a lot of the posting there neil's instagram i tend to put a lot of content on there as well. He's been doing a lot on his own, which is awesome. Uh, that's what I would hope for if I was to ever help an athlete with social media and how to get started. I would suggest don't pay somebody, do it yourself because if it comes from your mouth, it's a lot more authentic. Maddox Method, and that's it, I believe. That should be it. If, any, if there is another one, I'll right under, underneath uh, the, the list. Essentially, I have my hand in all of those. And then, of course, that's just Instagram. Facebook, I did just ask for Maddox Method access today. I also have Extreme Athletics access, and obviously Big Man Syndrome and Big Man Media. Um, I haven't really done too much on Big Man Syndrome. I think I, I post from Instagram to there, which is a no-no in the social media world, but I do it for now because I just don't have time to manage Facebook too. And same for Big Man Media. But a lot of things going on. Uh, as far as that is concerned, all while trying to figure out how I can also just build this easy to understand package for clients to look at and say, yeah, that sounds like it would fit what I'm trying to do with this event or what I'm trying to do for marketing. Uh, but next on the, the menu is I'm going to pre uh, prepare a sort of presentation. The marketing consultant that I'm working with to try and figure out how uh, me and him can work together as far as him being the marketing ads expert and I'm the video expert. Uh, we're going up to San Francisco to talk to a group about why video is so important and why, you know, even if it's awkward or feels weird, how personal branding is really, really important for your business. Uh, even if you're a big business like Apple, the reason why people love Apple computers and love the Apple product wasn't because it, of the product itself. Obviously it's a great product to be successful in the world, you gotta have a good product. But it was because Steve Jobs was just a, such a such an individual that people wanted to follow, people wanted to be a part of, and the way you could be a part of his life is by purchasing his products. Um, that sounded kinda weird, but I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna prepare a little presentation that I will be sort of speaking in front of people and explaining how you can implement video in your everyday life uh, and the, the steps that you can take. It'll go from, you know, super expensive hiring somebody to as cheap as possible doing it yourself and hopefully i can make some sense out of it because i as of lately haven't been very good at explaining yeah. I really don't know why I hit record. Uh, I'm not ready. <laughs> There's that. <laughs> I don't even really want this in the frame. Let's <laughs> that's, that's see here. Oh. So the thing is, I did an AM tap right before the open started. My thought process was I was going to do videos on the movements that happen most often or are more likely to happen for the open. So the first one I did was bar muscle ups, but I probably missed the mark on how it should be titled and whatever. Regardless of the performance of that video, I really wanted to, like I said on this channel, I want to at some points teach. So I figured out, hmm, maybe I could do this thing called <coughs> AMTAP, as much technique as possible. Well, I have the subject for today, but I'm trying to figure out the details. Like, 
How long should these be? What should the structure be? It's funny because the camera is not attached to the table, but the table is shaky. Let's try to unshake the table. That's not possible. A two minute AM tap, even though that's a very Peter McKinnon sounding thing. But let's just uh, be completely honest. Peter McKinnon is a huge influence on how I produce. So, so two minute AM tap, three points. Point one is, point two, Point three. All right, so since we don't have a lot of content today because I, one, got too busy, two, it's Monday and it's a recovery day, so not a lot to record, three, uh, that's a lie because I could totally record myself doing a bunch of recovery stuff, but, you know, got busy, took Dill to Target, went to PetSmart, had a lot of things to do, still have a lot of things to do, so anyways, we're going to talk about kettlebell swings. Now, in the future, I plan to have these outside of the vlog. I'm either going to have on Tuesdays an upload of a vlog and an AMTAP, or I'm going to stop doing daily vlogs, and I'm going to have just the upload for Tuesdays is going to be Technique Tuesday. Uh, this will help lighten the load and give me a reason to sort of shorten what I'm doing and plan a certain video that may take me less time to edit. Without further ado, today's two minute amp tap is going to be about kettlebell swings. Here are three reasons why your kettlebell swings either feel off or why you fatigue extremely quickly in three, two, one, go. 20 seconds. As Peter McKinnon would say, I'm gonna to try to keep this under two minutes, but it's probably not gonna happen. And we are gonna get started in 10 seconds. All right. So reason number one is your hip pop is not generating enough power to swing the kettlebell forward. Uh, this is either due to an early pull with the shoulders, which you shouldn't be using your shoulders to begin with for lifting the kettlebell. And another reason is because you're bending your knees too much and letting them fall forward. So the power that you can generate from the hip is decreased by that lack of tension in your hamstrings. Um, so that will segue into the second point, but to finish that thought off, keep your shoulders tight back and not loose and do not lift the kettlebell off your hips. Keep that kettlebell pressed up into your pelvis and pop it off of your hips, okay? Reason number two is your back angle and your shin angle combined. So your shins should stay perfectly vertical while your back angle stays flat, okay? You should not curve your back or over arch your back. That's including your neck. You should not have a broken neck. Everything should be in line and that kettlebell should be going straight back through your hips. Um, this is going to keep you in balance and allow you to generate maximum power into that hip drive and pop the kettlebell out of your hip pocket. And reason number three is the receiving position. Uh, now, just like the hip pop, the receiving position is also just as important. If you are letting go of your hips too early and basically catching the kettlebell versus absorbing the kettlebell, you're not gonna be able to return that kettlebell back into the swing position. So wait until that kettlebell gets to your hips, like literally the kettlebell is about to hit you right in the groin, that's when you unlock your hips and push your hips back to then drive back into the kettlebell. So I kind of made it in two minutes, but I don't think I really explained it well enough. It's a good practice. Good practice run for a two minute amp tap. For the most part, this is probably gonna be longer than two minutes. So let's go back to that hip pop really, really quick. It's just like doing a deadlift, okay? When you do a deadlift, the only reason why your knees would go forward in a deadlift is to get into that final position where the barbell touches the ground. In a deadlift, you're going much, much lower uh, in that position to get the barbell and the bumpers to touch the ground. Kettlebell swing, Think of it as that top portion of the deadlift when you push your butt back and you're tr bringing that barbell down to the knees. Okay, once you get to the knees, that's the position you should feel in a kettlebell swing. Back super flat, everything's engaged, core is engaged, your net neutral spine is all active. The only difference is instead of your arms being hanging in the hang position of the deadlift, they're going to be back in between the hips because of the momentum of the kettlebell. You're not physically pushing the kettlebell back. You are only allowing that bell to fall through your hips and then you're absorbing and popping, popping the hips. And then to that hip pop, once you've 
you know, built enough tension in your hamstrings because your shins are vertical, your butt is back, your chest is technically up, as in your spine is neutral, you can now generate a ton of power to bring that bell out in front. Now, one thing I did want to mention is that tall position. When you've swung the kettlebell, uh, one of the common mistakes is leaning back with that kettlebell and trying to uh, counteract the weight, okay? This might happen with super heavy weight, uh, but you should avoid it at all costs because that is not a natural position for us to be in. We want to build strength in a standing position. Just like you would be standing tall without weight, once you've popped that kettlebell, you should hold everything so tight that you are just standing up tall with that bell out in front. So you've popped your hips, bell is out in front, it's now coming down towards your groin. This is the third most common mistake, and that is releasing your hips early. You want to hold tension throughout the movement as much as possible. And like I said, you want that bell to literally get to your uh, hip pocket before you release your hips. Okay, so squeezing your glutes. If someone was to come over and poke you in the butt, your butt cheeks, it should break their finger because of how tight you're squeezing those glutes. I don't know, that sounded ridiculous, but whatever. You've popped your hips, glutes are squeezed, glutes are squeezed, glutes are squeezed, all the way up until that bell is coming right back at the hips. Right before it nails you right in the hips, release the hips, absorb the kettlebell, and quick, quickly into the next swing. So hopefully that made a lot of sense. Probably not. I really would like to make something out of this. The am tap, maybe once a week, maybe once a month. We'll see how it goes. I definitely want to do it because it gives me an opportunity to do what I said I wanted to do, and that's educate a little bit. Previously, as a CrossFit coach, I can lend that on this channel because I do have a lot of experience, and I learn very quickly, so in turn, I can teach possibly quickly. I don't know if that makes sense, but whatever. Hope you enjoyed that. That is, uh, that's it for today. Sorry it was a strange piece of content. Uh, we really wasn't sure what I was doing. I grabbed the camera at noon, I think it was, or was it two, when I uploaded yesterday's vlog and was like, wow, where did the day go? I didn't even pick up the camera very early. And I think it's because I know Monday is kind of weird and I don't know what I'm doing for Mondays, but this might be it. This, this could be a good way to do Mondays where I got a lot of work to do in the beginning of the day and then I can start recording midday and then I could just record a, a tech Tuesday because the daily vlog thing for me at least doesn't seem to mesh but daily uploading is something that I do want to do I want to make sure I do because that's basically the strongest way to grow in the crew hope you enjoyed it if you're new subscribe if you're not new tap and go that like button leave a comment share this video those are the things that help grow the crew and until tomorrow well I'll see you later crew that's a good exercise too because I gave myself two minutes to explain something that could have easily gone off on tangents. So next time I go to talk about anything, I might actually focus a little bit more rather than like blah 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 blah, even though the second half of that was blah blah blah.